Equalization has two main functions in mastery. Solving specific problems, like buildups at particular frequencies, and applying general tone shaping. Mixes with frequency response problems will not translate well over different playback systems. For example, mixing in rooms that aren't treated acoustically might result in bass-heavy mixes because the room itself reduced the bass response and the mix compensated for that. While the mix might sound okay played back in that room, it won't sound right on other systems. When mastering, use the best speakers possible in an acoustically treated room. Using near-field monitors and mastering at relatively low levels can help minimize the impact of room acoustics. One mastering trick for EQ is to load a well-mastered commercial recording into the track column so you can compare it to your track. If your music sounds brighter or duller, then you know what kind of EQ you need to add. Also, the Studio One Pro Spectrum Analyzer can give an indication of where there might be problems. Studio One Pro's Pro EQ is ideal for mastering as it offers seven individual EQ bands for shaping your sound. If you need more bands, you can put two Pro EQs in series. The low mid, mid, and high mid stages can boost or cut the response at a specific frequency. You can also choose whether the boost or cut is sharp or narrow. The low and high frequency bands offer either a parametric or shelving response. Shelving adds a gentle boost or cut in the bass or treble regions. Boosting a treble shelf makes a song brighter, while cutting makes it warmer. Too much cutting causes dullness. With bass, boosting with a shelf can add low-end power, while cutting can reduce muddiness. Too much cutting gives a thin sound. Two more stages are dedicated to rolling off high or low frequencies. The low cut filter can reduce response progressively below the cutoff frequency. A common low cut filter application is to remove extremely low frequencies like subsonics. Some people feel that digital audio can sound too bright and that adding a steep high cut filter around 20 kHz sweetens the sound. The Pro EQ also includes some diagnostic tools. Click on Spectrum to enable a view of the frequency spectrum. And you can click on the output meter to create an indicator line that defines the meter level within one tenth of a dB. Let's cover some important tips. First, the bypass button is your friend. Use it to maintain perspective on the changes you're making. Each stage has an enable-disable switch. Use it to hear the contribution each stage makes to the sound. Also note that mastering involves very small changes. If you change EQ half a dB on an individual track, you won't hear much difference. But with mastering, adding half a dB essentially adds it to every single track. To make these small adjustments easier, you can fine-tune EQ settings by holding down Shift. If you're new to mastering and you think you need to add, for example, 2 dB of boost, cut it in half to 1 dB and live with the sound for a while. Your ears need time to acclimate. Also, try cutting instead of boosting. For example, cutting the mid-range might sound more natural than boosting the bass and treble. If you come up with an EQ setting that sounds good, save it as a preset. Then you can experiment with other curves, but return to the original if needed. High quality mode uses more CPU resources, but compared to multi-tracking where you might use multiple EQs, with mastering the difference is negligible. Finally, remember that EQ isn't about trying to achieve a flat response, but a balanced one. If you see a big bass peak, don't be too quick to bring it down. It might be the kick drum in a dance mix.